Well, come in. You'll find out. Dennis, do I have to fetch you? All right, I'm coming. Get off, will you? So you've got to go to work in this house. And stand up when I'm talking to you. Can I hear you? Yes, what does you do? Listen, the television's coming back today. So what? So, somebody's got to be in for it when it comes. Well, don't look at me. Look, how is it I can't get the simplest thing out of you? All I'm asking you is to stay in one day, one day in your life, and what do I get? I'm having enough of this, Dennis Tanner. You're not running this house as if it's an hotel. What fine hotel this is. Yeah, well, we'll have less of your cheek and all. If it was left to you, the place would be a pigsty. Now, where'd I put my purse in there? Have you made your bed yet? I've not got up yet. Oh, haven't you? Well, you can just get up. And you can make your bed and you can wash the breakfast things and all. Where are you going, anyway? Going dancing. Dancing on a Saturday morning? This afternoon. Look, all I want to find out is, will you be in when the television man comes? Yes. Well, all you've got to do is to open the door to him. He knows where the set goes. Hey, say, don't come this morning. Them fellas work all day Saturday and I'm going out half past two. I'm not doing without it another weekend. I've little enough pleasure as it is. Oh, and by the way, Linda and I are coming. They'll be here before you go. What are they coming for? Never mind what they're coming for. Coming to do the, some shopping for the baby when it comes. That kid. Anybody you think we're fair to throw on a flipping pole and... Oh, you can talk. You might have one of your own one of these days. Heaven forbid. Heaven help it, you mean. Now, look. I'm writing you a note. And listen to me when I'm talking to you. I'm writing a note. And I'm leaving the key with Flory Lindley at the corner. Now, do you understand that? Can't help it, noise you're making. Now, listen, if you're in, well, you do it. If it's Linda and Iden, then then Whoever it is, sticks this note on the front door. Now, do you understand that? Yeah, but nobody else would. Oh, God, it's a duck. It's as clear as daylight. Now, there's the note, and you've understood what I've said to you. Oh, and by the way, if Linda and Iden haven't had anything to eat, tell them to get themselves some dinner before they go out. They'll find some cold meat in the scullery, and they can go out for chips. Now, here's the note. Kids. Who'd have them? That's all I can spare. Do you think it'll be enough to see you on? Oh, thank you, love. That'll be champion. It's this new milkman of ours, you know. He, he hasn't got quite used to my ways. You know, sometimes I forget to leave a bottle out at night. Well, you know how it is. Now, now the old chap, he, he was a nice young fella, he was. He, he used to leave one weather or not, but this other bloke, he hasn't got into the hang of it. They all have to be trained, don't they? Ah, yes. Some of them learn quick and some of them doesn't. No, I know that well enough. Yeah, I don't know you would have to grumble that. You soon settle down here. Do you really think so? Well, I do, for sure. Well, maybe you're right. I was doing my books last night and my sales have gone up by nearly a quarter since I took over. Yeah, <laughs> that's the spirit. You know, there's a lot to be said for being young. That's where you've got the laugh on those old ones, you know. You're not so set in your ways. Adaptability, that's what you've got. Is that what you call it? Aye, now then, how much do I owe you for this? Oh, forget it. Want yes. a drop of milk? Indeed, I won't forget it. And if you won't take the money, well, I'll bring you half a pint back tomorrow. You'll do no such thing. Now, you let an old chap have his way. If I'm going to start taking favours, I might just as well pack up. Do whatever you think best. Right. Well, thank you very much. I'll let you have this back tomorrow. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Taller. Look after yourself. Good oh, morning, Mrs. Taller. Good morning. <laughs> He's a real old gentleman, that. Don't know what the street would be like without him. <laughs> look, I've uh, come to ask you a favour. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, look, my television set's coming back today and there'll be nobody in. That's if he comes this afternoon. So I was wondering, would you take my spare key and give it to him if he comes? Uh, there'll be a note on the front door. That's all right. I'll do that for you. Oh, thanks a lot. That's a load off my mind. You don't miss them till you haven't got them, do you? Are you staying the night? Yes, any objections? Couldn't care less. Oh, thank you very much. Think nothing of it. Did my mum leave any messages? No. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. She said if you hadn't had any dinner, there was some cold meat and you could go out for chips. Well, isn't that a message, you silly nit? Is it, Eck? Unless that silly nit. So you've come back, have you? I'm sorry. You what? I said I was sorry. What for? For calling you a nit, you silly fool. Oh. Hey, uh, don't 
Don't you uh, want to sit down? Don't you start. Oh, of course, one has to be very careful at times like this, as one not. I mean, like, uh, how would you like a nice jar of pickled onion? What do you know about it? I'm not, not a kid, kid, you know. Hello, mm. Denise. Mm. These noodles on your mother's bed. Oh, Hello. yeah. Is this today? Yeah. <clears throat> Giving messages to him like posting letters down a grid. You've got it, haven't you? No, thanks to you. Television man, if out, key at corner shop. Yes, yeah, he's coming back today. My mum said it, if we went out before it came back, we've got to shove that on the door. And don't look at me like that, I'd have remembered. No, I'm sure you would. I'm a busy man, you know. Oh, I believe that when I see it. All right, come down to club tonight and then you'll see. Mm. How's the job going, Dennis? Oh, it's all right. Of course, you know, it's not everyone can go along with these showbiz people. Showbiz? I could add them faith. All right, all right, you're only jealous. Just because you don't wear smart clothes and have your own adult posh places. That's not everything. What do those people do? Do they have homes to sit in? Where do you think they live? In caves? They all have classy flats in London. We got a fella up this week, songs at the piano, real hot ears. Came in yesterday, we had a whacking great big box. Come and tell me what you think of this, Dennis, he says. Smashing fur coat it were, you know, real big one. Just a little something for the wife, he says. That's the way they are, they earn it and they spend it. Thought you were going out. Yeah, I am. Yeah, have you had your dinner? Yeah. Well, you won't forget to shove that thing on the door, won't you? Hey, uh, that kid of yours. When it comes, I'll be Uncle Dennis, won't I? it will have to get over that. Uncle Dennis, for a lot. You don't look too good, Chuck. Would you like I make you a cup of tea? Thanks for the compliment. If ever sake, stop fussing. And get it right, it's not would you like I make you a cup of tea. I'm sorry, I just thought uh, a drink of tea might help. Oh, I'm all right. Come on, let's get to town before it gets too packed. Are you sure you wouldn't like a little race? I told you once, stop fussing. And before we go, have you decided what you're going to spend that seven quid on? I don't know. I was talking to a man yesterday about cots. Cots? It's months away yet. What are you worrying about cots for? If you think I'm going to the house, cluttered up with things like that. Look at you. I'm just getting tired of this kid already. What about me? I'm here now, I am. I'm not coming in a few months' time. I'm here now. Sit down, honey. Well, it's true. It's not true. The money's for you to spend any way you want. Any way I want. Any way I want, as long as it's on that kid. Don't think he can get around me like that. All right, it's your overtime. Go and spend your lousy seven quid. Buy your cot. I was talking to this man. You wouldn't talk to him about me, would you? You wouldn't say there are a few things my wife wants. What was he, another foreigner? I was talking to this man, um, and he told me how to make cods. He said for 25 to 30 shillings, I could buy wood. You weren't going to buy a cot? No. What would you let me go on for? Why don't you stop me before I say things like that? Why did you hit me? I don't want to hit you. Come on, Jog. You'll feel better soon. You'll think I'm trying to make you feel I think I'm feeling ill. I know you don't. It's just... It's just... Yes? Oh. It's going to be all right, isn't it? Cool. No, I'm dead, Doc, but I get scared. Don't you be scared. Don't you be frightened of anything. Not of the babe and not of me. Shall we go now? No, wait a minute. Would you like anything out of your case? Oh, my handbag's over there. It's a very beautiful face. Would you think you're kidding? You foreigners. You know, before when I said that, well, I didn't mean it. I know you didn't. And don't you be soppy. You watch it, Ivan Chavesky. Come on, let's go to town before it gets too crowded so we can't move. We forgot your mother's note. Oh, heavens, thank goodness you remembered. Otherwise, she'd have played Hamlet with us. How are you going on? Oh, not so bad as yourself. Oh, I can't grumble. Here, let me give you a hand with that. You can do with a pin for this. Yes, yeah, so I know. Good. Oh, all right. Oh. Sorry. Are you going to the match? No, we're going to the shops. Oh! oh got you spending, you. actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, watch her. See you. Bye-bye. All right, then. Yeah. Hello, Harry. Hello, love. Not working this afternoon. No, I'm not, love. First match I've seen for about three weeks. Oh, don't tell me you go there. All right, I know the bad without you telling me. Uh, I'll have uh, some of the 
Cough candy, please, look. To give yourself a cough, shout him. You never know you look. Might be something worth shouting about this week. More than you inside forwards from Doncaster over. 3,000 quid. <laughs> 3,000 quid. You hear them talk, they haven't got two eight minutes rub together. So you better be good. Well, I'll win. I know mine either way. I've got them on trouble chance. See you, look. Ah. Hello, love. Got tea to number 11, television man. Oh, yes, I'm expecting you. Oh, Tar, love. Will you be back soon? I could hang on, like. No. She won't be back till half past six. Oh, she works, you see. Right, oh, then I'll carry on, eh? Hey, hey. Could you have a look at my set? Well, what's up with you? Well, the picture's all right, but the sound's funny and sort of ringing in your ears. Ah, <laughs> well, uh, I'll have to take it in for that, like. Can't manage it today, though. Saturday afternoon, you know. Monday, do you? Well, you could look round and I'll see if it's gone any better. Monday morning, then. Okay. Tar. Ta-da! Ta-da! Approximately 4 p.m. Uh, can you describe the man? Well, he was, you know, just ordinary. Well, uh, let's take it in bits. How tall was he? <sighs> Some people haven't got the sense they were born with. Fancy, just fancy giving the key to a crook. No, oh, I give over, ma'am. It wasn't Florrie Lindley's fault. Well, whose fault was it, then? Just answer me that. Whose fault was it? Well, you heard what the copper said. You should never have put the note on the door in the first place. Just asking for trouble, he said. Oh, that's right. Go on, blame your mother as if I haven't got enough. It wasn't me who put the note on the front door in the first place. Remember that? You didn't think of that at the time, did you? I'll tell you something, it's taught me a lesson. Never was one for saving. Just as I get a few pounds, what happens? Burglars. Burglars in Coronation Street. It's like robbing the blind. Oh, go on, ma'am. It's not the end of the world. Oh, go on. Sympathise with me. <sighs> Six quid. Another 15 bob and I could have had that coat. I'll go and put the kettle on and make you a cup of tea. You know what I want to know is how do they know to look in things like these? Yeah. Oh, go and see this. Oh, that is, will you? Ma'am, what? Well, if you're a bit short, we can let you have a couple of quid. No. Television man is for the setback. We'll tell him to come in. All right. Suppose he'll won't pay him now. Hey, are you sure you can spare it? Of course, love. Bet you thought I'd never get here. <laughs> hmm. Well, it wasn't much of a job. It only cost you 15 bob. That's what you think. Well, if you do remember anything, let them know at the station. Are you on the telephone? No, but there's a phone box around the corner. By the way, there was something. Now, I asked him about my television set, and he said he'd come and look at it on Monday. Now, if he does, you could wait for him. I didn't. I wouldn't expect him if I were you. Some of them are cheeky, but not that cheeky. What if he does come? He won't, but if he does, set your old man on him. <laughs> I haven't got a husband. Well, there must be somebody around here who'll help you out. Yes. Yeah, I suppose there is, really. Well, ta-da. Ta-da. 
All I know is the copper was in Elsie Tanner's room. Good half hour, and then he went into the florist shop. Well, I shall learn all about it from her, then. I'm sure you will. She's jealous. Yeah, it's sickening, isn't it? Jealous, am I? Well, if you must spend your time messing around with darts and middle-aged women, I'm sure it's no concern of mine at all. There's your pint. That's one of four I want. All right. Uh, could you get a double whiskey in there, please? No, I could not, because it's full of beer. The first time I heard that, I fell out of my cradle. <laughs> you can't catch our concept. Oh, I don't know. Oh, you don't, don't you? Well, don't go thinking, Harry Hewitt, that you're the only catch around here. Because you're not. By the way, who's coming up tonight? Oh, team from White Line. Oh, where are they in lead? Oh, up at the top. i got some good adamant there. I'm playing last against old Cartwright. I remember he whitewashed Len last time he was oh. here. Find a beer, please. I'll be with you in a minute. Billy! Sure, you're right. That's the bus coming. Hey! Annie! Annie! It's our Billy! He's come home! Here you go! Here you go! What's good? You help! Come over here! Well, you will come round here. I'm a customer. How are you doing, Billy? Fine, I'm doing. Yeah, a couple of stripes. Yeah, yeah. Well, well. Oh, oh, oh! Doesn't he look grand? What do you expect? The monster from out of space? <laughs> Drinks on the house. Hey, Annie. I don't care, Jack Walker. Drinks on the house. Right. Beer on the house, everybody. Oh, look at him. Why didn't you let us know? He's come from Hong Kong, you know. How did you get here so fast? Oh, none of this third class stuff for me. Flew back, dead VIP. Come here. That's not bad. No, I'll get them up next week up at Waterloo Barracks. He ever run away, have you? <laughs> run away, have I? Heck. I'm on leave. He bless him, he hasn't changed a bit. Oh, haven't I? Uh, don't you kid yourself about that. Now, well, I've met to that now. Oh, Billy, <laughs> you naughty boy. Oh, come in the bar. I'll just get my kit bag. It's outside. No, no, you can't get it. Jack, get hey? my kit bag. No, no, Jack, I'll get it. You pull me that free pipe. <laughs> Just put them down there, Mr. Cooper. Can't call your soul your own. Who is it? Swindley, uh, Mr. Sharples. I brought Miss Nugent with me. Oh, have you? Were you going out? Out? No, why? You've got your coat on. I always wear my coat. I've worn it since 1945 in the boiler's dress. What do you want, come and bothering folk on a Saturday night? Uh, well, the circumstances are rather special. Uh, do you think we could come in? Why? Well, it's a business matter I want to discuss. Don't discuss business in my premises. There's more room out here. <laughs> What's them for? Well, that's why we're here, Mrs. Sharples. Uh, you know uh, tomorrow is, of course. Do I? Anniversary Sunday. Oh, I. Oh, I, yes. Well, I knew that. But what's it got to do with me? Well, as you know, we usually decorate the hall. And uh, this year, some of our helpers have uh, very kindly volunteered to make some artificial flowers. Oh, that's what them are, are they? Yes. Like bits of coloured paper to me. Yes, well, uh, unfortunately, we uh, couldn't collect them any earlier, and uh, time's getting a little short. And you want me to help you, is that it? Well, obviously, it's going to be too much for Miss Nugent, and uh, if we pay you, of course, the committee realises that uh, it's outside your normal duties. How much? Well, uh, you know, we've bought uh, five shillings. Five shillings? On a Saturday night? You know, people get paid trouble money for working on Saturday, and you're asking me to work all hours God sends for a measly five shillings. Now, Mr. And Charles. don't you get on your eye horse, Leonard Swindley. Remember that notice of yours in here. Slavery must be abolished. Uh, yes, yes. Well, I'm sure we can come to some uh, satisfactory arrangement, and uh, I'm afraid I can't stay. Uh, Miss Nugent will explain. Will she? Yes. Uh, good night, Mrs. Sharples. Uh, good night, Miss Nugent. Well... Go on. Explain. Oh, yes. Well, uh, first of all, the committee felt that the floor ought to be properly swept. What do you mean, properly swept? Well, with some of the children wearing long frocks. They won't come to no harm. You can eat your dinner off my floors. Oh, good. Well, that's all right, then. Now, the uh, chairs will have to be put out ready, and I thought we could clean up those vases in the bottom cupboard and arrange the flowers. That's all. Ah, well, just remember, they can't stay. Going to visit a sick friend. A sick friend? That's what I said. You arguing? No. I should think not. So uh, you'll have to manage by yourself, won't you? I hope your friend soon gets better. Do you worry? She will. Oh, I know my 
I'll let him alone. He won't open anyway. Come on, Rena, what are you doing here? You're trespassing. Is it right, young Billy Walker's come home? Aye. And landlady bought drinks? Aye, but don't let her not do it. Here, Jack. Here. What are you doing in there? Maybe you man, I hear your boy's home. Ah, oh, he is. Why, did you want to have a look at him? Do I, Eckers, like? I want me free drink. I'll have a bottle of stout. Hey, wait a minute, Eno. That was only for them as was here. What are you talking about? I'm all as here in spirit. Oh, but you wasn't here in body. Oh, so that's it, is it? Well, let me tell you something. If I'd half the money I've put in you until like I could buy a pub of my own. And there you are, you publican and sinner wallowing in your ill-gotten gains. Bright old sun comes home, you stand there arguing about a bottle of stout. There you are. I can't beat that. I'll have a glass. Where do you want it? In Snug? No, I'm going to drink it in there. What did she want? A free drink. You didn't give her one. Oh, well, more for you. What she taking it in the lounge for? Well, I've been working that out. I reckon she thinks she's done me out of an extra penny by having it in the best room. Oh. Ooh, what's that? <laughs> Quite a big bang. Oh, it was only somebody's dustbin going over. They don't send the fire brigade out to pick up dustbin. That was miles away. Don't be so daft. There's something going on and I don't know what. Hey, look what it's done to that picture. Oh, we were miles away from here. I don't now, come on, Harry, let's get on with game. Uh, you want double 19 now, come on. Double 19. Yeah. Why are you back? Hey, it's in! It's in! Well done! Well done! Well done! Well done! Hello, what's this? Everybody out, please. Hey, it's 28 minutes past 10. You're getting a bit hot, aren't you? Aye, and you'll be flipping out if you don't get out of here. There's a gas man on fire two streets back. Well, quiet, everybody. Quiet, please. And listen to me. Anybody who lives between here, Coronation Street and Maudsley Street, report to the fire officer over at St. Mary's. And that includes those that lives on Maudsley Street. Now, leave the place quietly, please. Those who live on Coronation Street, stay here for a minute. There's Mrs. Sharples here. Hi, Mrs. Sharples. Caretaker of the Glad Tidings Hall. That's right, never done a thing wrong in my life. Oh, no, but you said you are. Now, quiet, please. All those residents of Coronation Street, and that includes you, Mr. Walker, have got five minutes to get a couple of blankets and a pillow apiece and get across to the Glad Tidings Hall. You're all staying the night there. They're what? They're all staying the night in your place. Over my dead body. <laughs> A night in the mission hall beckons as the street is made safe. However, there is another potentially explosive situation on the cards, courtesy of, you guessed, Ina Sharples. Classic Coronation Street, the beginning. There's more on Granada Plus. <laughs> time to stand here arguing, Mrs. Sharples. Two streets away, there's a gas main on fire. And if it goes up, the backs of the houses on this part of Coronation Street could just catch it. I don't care. Precautions have to be taken. And the first one is that the people who lives in these houses stays the night in your mission. And you know what I say to that? Over my dead body. Suit yourself. And if you want an argument, go and see the superintendent. Now, let's be having you. Those who lives in the houses I mentioned report to the fire officer over at St. Mary's. Them as lives in Coronation Street, back home as fast as you can, pick up a couple of blankets and get over to the Mission Hall. And leave your front doors open, please, just in case. I'm not leaving this place unlocked. There's valuable stock here. I've got to answer to the brewery. It's all right, Annie. All right, be blowed. What if a case of whiskey goes missing? Don't worry, Mrs. Walker. We'll be looking after the place. That's what I'm worried about. Come on, now. <laughs> Let's be having you. It's better than cook final, isn't it? No, I don't know what you're laughing at. You haven't been turned out to your house. No. Hey, Len. Hmm? You do me a favour. Hi, what? Look after me whippets just for one night. Hey, now, hang on, Harry. You, you know what Nelly is about dogs. Well, it's just for one night, and I can't take them oh, over yeah, there. No, I thought you were a mate of mine. Well, I am. You don't know Nelly. Of course I do. No. Well, come on, lad. It's only for oh, one night. All right, then. All right, I will. 
Only don't blame me if she kicks the damn things out of the house. I'll take a chance on that. Come on. All right, officer. I'll leave it to you. Ah, come on, Mr. Sharples. I won't tell you again. Well, I'm glad of that. Well, now, come on, let's be happy. Don't here. you lay a hand on me. I'm not moving from here till I've seen your superintendent. If I fetch him, there'll be trouble. I know, I'll make it. A gas explosion is uh, an act of God, and it's got now to do with me. You wait till Mr. Leonard Swindley is about this. Who's he when he's at home? You'll find out. Mr. Leonard Swindley happens to be the chairman of the committee that runs the Glad Tidings Only, a very great friend of mine. He'll have a lot to say about this. He's probably saying it now. He's the fellow we first sent for. You going over there, uh, shall I fetch him? Well, it must be somewhere. Oh, they say everything happens in threes. First we have a burglar, then a fire, now I can't find me flaming lipstick. Well, you can borrow one of mine. Oh, it's too light for me. Well, what do you want a lipstick for, anyway? You don't think I'm going to let that box see me first thing in the morning without my face on, do you? I've brought enough for Dennis, too. Oh, goodness knows when he'll be home. Oh, there it is, all the time slips through the hole in my lining. Oh, come on, ma'am. Stop minding him, will you? I've got to see to the house, haven't I? Heaven knows the fire brigade will be tramping in and out of here all night. Now, where did I put my wedding photograph? Oh, I might have known you'd bring your bowling bag. Well, you can't buy woods like them nowadays. And it's all I've got, all you have to think of at a time like this. Bowls, and within an hour, this place might be burnt to a cinder. Oh, get away with I suppose you. I ought to be thankful I'm not bedridden. What on earth are you talking about now? You know very well what I'm talking about. If you had to make a straight choice between me and your bowling uh, bag, which would you take? Eh? I said, which would you take? I'm oh. waiting for an answer. Oh, come on, I see, you prefer not to say. Oh, well, I suppose that's better than telling a downright lie. Give over, Annie. You know very well which I'd take. Do I? Oh. Do I? Well, tell me then. Go on, don't stand gawping. Tell me. All right. If I thought you were going to carry on like this for the rest of my life, I'd take my flipping bowling bag. Ah, so it's out in the open at last. What is? Now, look, Annie, you know quite well... Oh, I do, I do indeed. There's many a true word spoken in jest, and you've never said a true word in the whole of your life. All right, now we know where we stand. Just thankful the children don't realise what's wrong. I don't even realise it myself. Really? No, I don't. <coughs> oh. Is this a private fight, or can anyone join in? Are oh, you ready, are you? Where's Conceptor? I'm here. What's that you've got? Oh, it's reportable radio. Wherever I go, this goes. Oh, I wouldn't take it there, love. Well, why not? Why not? You know, I'll go up wall. I will let her. Never you mind. <laughs> I don't care. I'll face the inner if necessary. Thank you. Hey, what's up with her? Hey, I don't know. <laughs> Women. <laughs> They make you sick, don't they? Make you sick? They drive you round the bend. And if you take my... Hey, come on, come on. And don't talk like that about your mother. Yes, I'll just uh, leave it all for me, uh, Superintendent. Here we go. Oh, it's a little bit. Thank you very much. Well, they'll be arriving shortly, Miss Nugent. Oh, yes, Mr. Swindon. Oh, dear. After you set them out so nicely, too. Oh, well... Sharple say when she'd be back. No, Mr. Swindler, she just said she had to visit a sick friend, and that was why she couldn't help me set the room out in the first place. I see. Sounds like her now. Carry on, Miss Student. Yes, Mr. I wonder if there'd be a soon in my grave. Oh. Who is it? It's me, Mrs. Sharples. Heard about the emergency, of course. Oh, yes, I heard there was someone took by uh, when I got up the bus. Uh, oh, yes, yes. Uh, how is your friend? Oh, she's coming on. Oh, good, good. Well, uh, we must get ready to receive our visitors. Our what? Our visitors. The people from Coronation Street. Are you standing there telling me you're letting them come? Well, of course. We must offer the hand of friendship. Offer the hand of friendship to that lot and they'll bite it. Well, they're not coming here. That's what I told the copper in the, at the bus stop, and that's what I'm telling you. Oh, but we mustn't be like that, must we, Mrs. Sharples? I don't know who we is, but that's how I'm being. Have that scrubbing up, tramping all over my clean clothes, not likely. I'm afraid I've already given my permission. Well, then you can take it back. 
Answer me this, Leonard Swindley. How many of them can say that this is their place of worship? Go on, how many? That's not the point. Of course it's the point. Now, you force me to say this, Mrs. Sharples. The fact that we don't number you amongst our congregation doesn't stop you living here in this vestry. That's right. Twist it round to suit yourself. It doesn't matter to you that a poor old woman has to get down her hands and knees and scrub after them, does it? And they are only just out of hospital herself and just back from the bedside of a sick friend. Oh. I brought your gloves, Eva. You left them in the bar. Oh, good evening. I know what you're thinking, Leonard Swindley. And you're probably right, Mrs. Sharples. You're probably right. Thank <laughs> you. I'll put my foot in at that time, all right. You're never doing anything else. Uh, what's the best place, love? I should think it's less drafty over there by the stage. Oh, yes. Come on, Concepta. I don't. Mm. <coughs> I've finished, Mr. Swindley. Mm. Shall I light the giver? Oh, yes. Yes, yes, please do. <clears throat> Having our usual trouble with Mrs. Sharples. Oh, dear. Nothing much we can do about it, of course. It uh, comes outside her normal duties, and it's hard enough to get her to perform bows. Well, you can count on me, Mr. Swindley. Thank you, Miss Nugent. Uh, yes, well, uh, make some tea now, will you? And uh, you better fill the geese up again. They'll probably want some hot water bottles. Yes, Mr. Swindley. Mm. How do you do? <laughs> Oh, good evening. Oh, my name is Swindley. How do you do? Mr. Uh, uh, Barlow from Barlow. number three. This is oh, my yes. wife from Barlow. Barlow. How do you do? And Mr. Tassel. How do you do? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. We're old friends, aren't we? We are. Yes, yes. Uh, yes. Now, if you just uh, find a place over there somewhere, there'll, there'll be some tea in a minute. Oh, that'll be nice. Aren't they kind, Frank? Yes, yes. Sorry, Daphne. Oh, oh, thank on. you, love. Go on. That's right. <laughs> In here, Mr. Uh, uh, Hewitt. Hello, Hewitt. Mr. Hewitt. <laughs> Glad to have you with us. Oh, Glad to be here. <laughs> Just uh, over there somewhere, Mr. Hewitt. Uh, All right, Mom. Well, thank you. All right, Dad. As right as I ever shall be, lad. Anybody up there, Jack? No, yeah. help yourself. Oh, I've got rid of it with It's good. Uh, Len took him. Oh, hey, do you think we can smoke in here? I don't know. I can't see anybody lighting up. No, neither can I. Hey, Abby, go and ask him. Who, me? Oh, why not? He can't but say no. Why, what if he does? Do you think he might? I'll never know. But I think the best thing we can do is get the blankets out and get underneath, have a crafty draw. Oh, all right. What are you two whispering about? Nothing. Ah, oh, well, that's a subject you know plenty about. <laughs> oh, Hello, Good evening. Oh. How are you? Well, thank Still you here somewhere. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, Miss, um... Oh, right. oh, of course, Miss Hartman. Yes, over there. So, hello, Mrs. Lindley. Nice to see you. Make yourselves comfortable. <laughs> Is this anybody's place here? Don't know if you're all right there. Oh, I wouldn't have what had happened. Did you hear the bang? Oh, so I did. Nearly scared the wits out of me. I do feel stuck just like this. I'm the only one. But I was in bed when the policeman came. It would have been too silly to get dressed just to come and go to bed, oh. wouldn't it? Of course it would. They never gave me the chance. If they had it done, I'd have been just like you. <laughs> Now, Christine, she's sensibly dressed. Wish I had the figure for that outfit. <laughs> well, I got changed as soon as I came on from the pictures. Oh, yes. Did you go with Joe? Yeah. He's a nice lad, isn't he? Yes. Very. Oh, Are you getting on now, love? Oh, all right, thanks. I never came to see you after your mother died, but you know how it is with two grown lads. I've just never had a chance. Oh, that's all right. Still, if there's anything you want, you'll let me know, won't you? Yes, I will. Thanks. Oh, Mr. Could you uh, just down there, Mr. Uh, Nugent? I will speak to you in a moment. Uh, now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, could, I, could I just have your attention for a moment, please? I'd just like to have a word with you before, Miss... Uh, no, no, before, please, Miss uh, Newman. Uh, serves tea. <laughs> well, it uh, gives me great pleasure to uh, welcome you to the Glad Tidings Mission Hall, even though the circumstances are somewhat uh, unusual. <laughs> However, I uh, am a great believer that there's always some good in everything, and uh, what has happened tonight has at least given you the opportunity to see the inside of the hall. And... Uh, I hope you'll agree that here is an atmosphere of cheerfulness and goodwill. Oh, <laughs> oh, perhaps you'd like to put that down for a moment, Miss... Uh, Thank you. Uh, 
Uh, perhaps you'll feel, as I do, that within these walls you're safe from the troubles and turmoils of the outside world. Here, you may say, is a haven that knows no storm. A quiet corner, undisturbed in its tranquility. Like I said, a gas main going up is an act of God. It's got now to do with me. And if you expect me to be a ministering angel to that lot, you've got another thing coming. Oh, I don't expect it, Mrs. Sharples. In fact, I've come to the point when I expect the bare minimum out of you. I'm not so sure I like that sort of talk in a holy place. What I meant is, Mrs. Sharples, that the committee gets no cooperation from you. Not so very long ago, I had to issue you a warning. Don't you go warning me. I had to issue you a warning that the committee does not like its caretaker visiting licensed premises. That's right. He calls a fire on my defenceless head. No wish to do that, Mrs. Sharples. At the same time, I shall have to report that tonight Miss Nugent set out this hall alone while you visited that place, the Rover's Return. More of you told Miss Newton that you'd gone to visit a sick friend. And so I did. Mother Longer had bronchitis for years. I only went to give her a bit of company. It's a fabrication, Miss, Mrs. Sharples, a gross fabrication. Never mind what it were. I heard what you said to them a bit since outside there about an atmosphere of cheerfulness and goodwill. It's about time we had something to see a vestry. Nothing to be gained by staying here. Well, that's the first sensible thing you've said. Same time, rest assured that your conduct will be fully reported to the committee. You reported to the Prime Minister. And I'm not looking after that lot. They're probably freezing that all anyway. Mrs. Sharp. Now, don't you start. So long, Mr. Stewart. I'll take you home in my car. And if you've got any sense, you'll watch him. something, Mrs. Tanner? Yes, I did, Mrs. Sharples, and while I'm about to I'll say something else. It's bad enough being chucked out of your house, and having to stay the night here is a damn start worse, but when you start chucking your flaming waste about, that's the limit. And if we want a bit of music, we shall have a bit of music. Oh, will you? We'll see about that. Were you wanting something, Mrs. Sharples? Because if you were, we might get the idea that we're not welcome here. And if we did get that idea, you wouldn't be welcome at our house. If that thing disturbs me in the vestry, I'm having the police in. And don't you get big-headed, Jack Walker. I can soon find myself another pub. <laughs> <laughs> See, I enjoyed that. Come on, let's show her. Roll out the barrel. Let's have Shut a... up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I've been dying to put a spoken area for long enough. Know. Well, just watch it, ma'am. Don't go starting anything else. What do you mean, starting anything else? I didn't start that. She did. Oh, if anybody's to blame, it's always your mother, They're isn't it? They're all back. Here, what are you wearing? What? Well, what are you sleeping in? I'm sleeping as I am. Eat, that's not hygienic. Oh. Well, if you think I'm going to do a strip tease in front of that lot, you've got another thing Well, you it. can please yourself, but my fox coming off. I'm not having to all crease tomorrow. Besides, I've got to wear it to work for Monday. Hey, ma'am, you can't. Oh, can't I just? Come on, hold up that blanket. Go on, hold it up. Go on, get the end. Ah. Come on. I'll show you. Right. Well, I do about seven o'clock, me and the missus, we used to make a flask of tea and cut a few sandwiches, and then we'd go off to the shelter. When we got there, like as not, there'd be a bit of a sing-song going on. So we'd get ourselves settled down, and, and then we'd join in. And then you'd hear it. You know, I never have heard a banshee, but whenever that siren went, I said to myself, there's that banshee wailing again. And I reckon it worked worse sound at lot. Do you know, many a time we've sung our heads off when bombs were dropping, but when that siren went, it quite near down. By gosh, it did. And you'd lie there, it happened for an hour, maybe only for five minutes, just listening. And then somebody'd start a song going, and it'd be all right again. All right? You make it sound as if there was some good in it. Well, so there was, lad. So there was. You know, I reckon I'd more kindnesses done to me during that blitz. I never have had before or since. And I did more myself, too. 
Now, hey, look at them two over there. Do you think that'll be enough? Oh, you'll never oh, that'll be that plenty. They must have had their dinner before they could. I'll give it a little bit. Chrissy, that's oh, I guess the, there were more sharing in them days, you know, and, and less grabbing. And that's what happens when you bring folks together. And that's why this may be a good thing. Because if it's done now, else, it's brought Coronation Street together. Oh, oh, thank you, love. Oh, that's true. Hey, Yeah. Right, uh, a bit of smoke went the wrong way. Oh, I see. All right. Yeah. Hey, watch out, Jesse. Oh. You'd better all finish off whatever you're doing and put it light out. Oh, Have yeah. you just finished off now? If you can't find road to your mouth, it's dark. It's time you sort doctors. It's half past eleven and time for all decent folks to be in bed and asleep. Excuse me, Mrs. Sharp. Oh, what do you want? Well, I've got to go to work in the morning. I was wondering if you could lend me an alarm clock. I could not, but if you like to lie awake all night, you can hear town all clock from here. Now, think on this lights out in five minutes, and I'll put it out at the main. Good night. Harry? Yeah? I I've got my alarm clock here. What time do you want to call it? Six o'clock. I'm working. Oh, it's far too early for me. I'm going to see my sister, but the train doesn't go till nine. Look, I, I, I want to be up at seven o'clock myself. Well, I'll be going to work it. Mira, I'll be knocking up. So what are you talking about? Well, uh, it must see you it takes the alarm, and... Gives me a shake when he goes out, I can wake everybody else up. But we don't want to be up at different times. Oh, we'll soon settle that. Oh, yeah. Huh. Half past six. Oh, Thank you. Ah, uh, well, time do you want to get up, Mrs. Walker? Oh, well, it doesn't really matter, love, for conception and me. Mr. Walker will have to be up at half past seven. He's got a lot of work to do. Right. <laughs> Hey, let's go brains, eh? Oh, yeah. 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 Well, it looks as if all the trouble will be settled up by morning, so you'll only have one night in this hotel. Oh, thank God for that. This cold is out of time. Well, the gas may not be on, so the WBS are coming in the morning at seven with breakfast for you all. Seven o'clock, I'll be out for a quarter to two. That's a bit of hard luck. You're happy. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Hey, Jack, look at this. What is this? Bit of a letter found on the floor. Sweetheart, I just got back to camp after a good trip. Things are just the same now. All I can say is roll on another leave. The cakes you gave me were just a job, but not half as tasty as... That's a lot, just when it was getting interesting. Where did you get that from? I told you. Picked it up off the floor. It must be one of Ina's love letters. Well, let's have a look at it. Yeah. Go on, you take it. You blackmailer. I'm going to get my head down. What did you want to bring them for? Why shouldn't I? I haven't got a bowling bag. Oh, sorry, love. <laughs> Don't expect you've kept any of my letters. It was a grand leave, wasn't it, Danny? Hey, love. Good night. Good night, love. Jack. Aye, uh, what? I'll get up with you in the morning and give you a hand. All right, love. <laughs> Are you all right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, oh, no, I've got it. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. What do you want? Never mind me, son. What do you want? I want to get in. I'll live here. Any objections? I have plenty. I'm not sleeping in there for the night. Who says I'm not? Where have you been, son? What's it got to do with you? Did you come past Broadhurst Street? No, I never. So you're not going to pin anything on me. Son, you've been watching too much television. Now, if you'd have come past Broadhurst Street, you might have seen three or four fire engines. And when you saw me standing here, you might have said, what's going on up there? What is going on? Well, there's a gas main blown out. The backs of the houses are in danger. Since half past ten, everybody's been turfed out for the night. They're all sleeping over in the Glad Tidings mission. Now, does that suit you? Or do you want me to put it in writing? Well, why didn't you say so before? Come on, Jesse James, I'll let you in.
tried if I go home for a bit of a swill. I can't find anywhere yet. You can go home and stay there. Is it all right now? I have just had word come through. They've sealed it up. No further trouble. Not until next time, anyway. Well, that's a blessing. Hey, uh, are you hanging on here? Why? Well, I promised to wake that young lad over there. One or two of them want to get up early. Don't you worry. They'll be all getting up. <laughs> Don't know how you've got the art. Come on. Morning. Let's be having ya. Come on. Hey. Come on. Get out of bed. I'm back to home, sweet home. Come on, you must like this place. Oh, it's hard to get up in the morning. Come on. Shake your leg. thought you'd like to know there's nothing else to worry about. They're all going home. Hilda is desperate, for news of Stan, that is, and Bet and Betty are desperate too, which means asking Annie for their old jobs back. Classic Coronation Street next here on Granada Plus.